Next, I'm going to talk about SQL injection. SQL injection refers to your databases, the online databases that your web applications talk to, add information to, remove information from, display information that's been stored in them, and so forth. And SQL injection uses the ability of these fields to enter or query information from the database, but it breaks that query by the using by manipulating the input on the user application and by manipulating that user input it breaks that query and thus causes the SQL query to be changed and therefore they can then retrieve information, retrieve passwords, inject information into uh, database fields and so on. Um, when these vulnerabilities are exploited, they can corrupt your databases. They can store malicious code in your in your uh, in your database. And if you have a lot of hacking activity, it can really cause problems for your database to the point where it needs to be removed, taken offline. The data needs to be scrubbed, and often is the case. Even backups don't help because the activity could be going on for weeks, and you could have six or eight weeks of backups that contain hacked data. So it's important to make sure that you have a proper data management policy in place, such as a every time the database schema is updated, a blank version of that database schema is is completed and saved in its entirety, ready for backup in the event of catastrophic failure. So you can restore the framework, and then once the data has been repaired or recovered, it can then be placed back into a clean original database. Um, often companies don't do this. They'll build a database, and they get hacked, and then their backups have been backing up the hacked database, and therefore they have no starting point. There is no way to run clean from the get-go. So there is downtime and re remediation time for the, the database, which could take potentially you know, a couple of hours to several days to maybe even weeks, depending on the size and quantity of data we're talking about. So let's briefly talk about how SQL injection works. So as the example here basically is that we're talking about a login field for a web application. So we have a field for the username, and so we're going to enter in foo. It doesn't really matter what we put in. And in the password, we're going to enter in, instead of a password, we're going to enter in quote, uh, quote anything, quote, or, quote, x, quote, equals, quote, x. What this means is that we're actually breaking the SQL command because the original application inevitably is going to send a SQL command to the database that says, go get me anything where this username and this password match. And if that record matches, it will return a true. It will say, yes, I found these two. And therefore, if it found these two, you're now officially logged in and will send you to a login page. But this phrase below here, breaks that. It says, go get me where username is foo and, and then we've said, hey, wait a minute, SQL, stop for a second. And now, we're instead of doing what I just described, it's saying, no, I want you to go get me anything where x equals x, which means I want you to give me any situation that's true. And, the seek, and so what happens is the database goes, well, x equals x. This is logically true. So I'm going to return a true message back. And as a result, this true message then allows you to log in. And it can potentially, depending on how a application is configured, it could actually give you keys to the entire application. It could give you administrative access. It's that simple. Another type of vulnerability is buffer overflow. Buffer overflow is uh, generally uh, not necessarily uh, as high risk or as, as common, but when it does occur, it allows the hacker to cause some fairly serious damage or some fairly uh, invasive access into your web application often at the server or operating system level. And so what it basically means is that it sends long arguments into the server. So we were talking about those parameters. We we're talking about um, certain fields that 
may not be monitoring the length of information being put in. And so a hacker will attempt to send in, you know, a abnormally large message or set of parameters into that, potentially causing errors. And if it does introduce these errors, often it can indicate errors at the system level or at the file system level. And giving them more information on how to access them. In fact, there is a particular buffer overflow vulnerability that can be attacked on Microsoft SQL uh, Server 2005 that can potentially give users access at the system level to be able to execute commands directly from the command line on the server. So, at the minimum, a buffer overflow attack can cause an application to hang um, become unresponsive or unreliable, and at the worst case of the scenario, it can actually give a hacker complete keys to the back end of the system. So we've talked about these vulnerabilities, and now let's think about that for a second and think about, are there risks then to your online application and your online assets, such as your database, user accounts, and so forth? And the quick answer is, of course, yes. You're going to lose data. There's going to be a loss of your online business and business relationships. Those, who, if there is any type of compromise in terms of security, if there's any type of compromise in terms of regulation where it's going to interrupt your business. We're going to talk about costs, uh, costs that are to remediate the application and data. I was referring to the database remediation beforehand and fixing the application so that it doesn't cause that problem in the future. These type of uh, repair and remediation activities often gain urgency once an attack has occurred, and therefore they become much more costly to deal with. And time and resources, of course, are limited these days. People are doing more with less, and they don't have the time and resources to deal with emergencies. The other issue is that if there are public security breaches, in other words, issues where um, security or uh, information or data has been corrupted and you don't know about it, and the end user actually informs you that there has been a problem or a security breach, and how that affects the public trust. Also, the issue is, is that you could end up being on Google Stop Badware site. If the site has been exploited and discovered by Google Stop Badware organization, that the site has been party to malicious activity. So when you are a party to a malicious activity, unwittingly, this is what ends up happening. Google says that this, this site may harm your computer. This alert will come up and be shown if your site contains the vulnerabilities as outlined. So if someone searches your website or attempts to browse to your website and you've been placed on the stop badware list, this is what they would see before they accessed your site. So ultimately, nobody wants to have their business be shown on Google as stop badware or being potentially risky to their clients. Therefore, we should manage our risks, risks proactively. Take an inventory of your web applications. Be careful about this. Make sure that you thoroughly understand what they do, how they operate, and how important they are to your business. You need to identify which applications are absolutely critical and you need to prioritize what things need protection now and what things need to be protected in the future. And you need to take these risks seriously and begin to develop.